Compass Publishing. Hi, everybody. My name is John Edwards, and uh, on behalf of Publish, uh, Compass Publishing, I'd like to welcome you to another of our webinar series. And this time, I'm going to be talking about uh, reading. And I know a lot of uh, teachers struggle with uh, teaching reading, and especially with getting their students interested in reading on their own, like doing extensive reading. So uh, I wanted to talk about this to topic. We'll talk a little bit about um, how to motivate students to do more reading, and then we'll talk about how to go through a reading lesson and the different parts of a reading lesson. And I'll give you some act activity ideas that you can try out in your classroom. So if, uh, if everybody's ready, um, let's begin. So we'll talk a little bit about um, engagement first. Engagement here means how to get your students interested in reading and, and interested in reading on their own especially. Then we'll talk about uh, learning flow, how to go through a lesson and how to uh, present a reading. And some, I'll give you some activity ideas. And then we'll talk about one of our series in uh, Compass Publishing, um, Reading Future. And I'll walk you through one of the units and, and talk to you about, a little bit about the, fe the features of that project, product. So let's talk about engagement first. So um, engagement here, you can see a picture that a lot of teachers would be very happy to see. This is a student reading on his own. So how can we get our students to be this interested in books that they'll go to, go to the library and check out a book on their own, something that they're interested in, and sit down with it for an hour and read for an hour a day? It seems like something out of a fairy tale for a lot of uh, a lot of teachers. One of the problems is that you know we have a lot of uh, a lot of competition from digital devices or from um, from socializing, from other activities, other kinds of schoolwork that gets in the way of reading. It seems a lot more interesting to uh, to play video games or to chat with their friends online than it does to actually sit down with a book. So the big question here is how can reading compete? How can, as teachers, how can we help reading to compete with digital media, friends, other schoolwork? Hi, everybody out there. Some people are saying hi in the chat, so. But we all know, as teachers, we all know that um, reading is very important, so. I just wanted to share with you this quotation from, um, from the New Zealand Council of Educational Research. It says, students who enjoy reading are more likely to succeed in school and in their engagement with various communities. So it's not only about building their abilities with, with reading, it's also about using reading to teach them vocabulary, to teach them grammar, kind of, uh, you know, that, that's a kind of a, a bonus uh, or a side, side benefit of, of getting them interested in reading. And I think a lot of you who have been teaching for a while have seen this with your students. You know, the students that really do a lot of reading on their own or they're interested in reading, their vocabulary and their overall language skills improve. So this also, of course, helps them to be, you know, engaged members of society and in different, different language communities. So reading is very important. I don't think I have to convince any teachers of that. So just to kind of unpack that quotation a little bit, why, why is it important for kids to read? It helps kids to deal with complex, the complex world and to understand adult issues. So by reading, they can kind of learn more about the world and learn more about how adults work in the world and learn about complex topics. Also, they can, you know, especially with fiction and poetry, they can learn that they're not alone in their feelings. Other people have also felt the same things that they're feeling, being alone, being, you know, being uh, not understood, maybe feeling like grief or these kinds of things, these kinds of difficult emotions that that kids go through, 
they can kind of understand that other people feel those things also. And also, they can develop a very broad and useful vocabulary and reading skills that are going to help them in all kinds of topics, in all kinds of learning. As we all know, I think most of us experience this in our, in our own lives, you know. Reading habits are changing these days. The way people read, you know, you very rarely see people sitting down with a newspaper or sitting down with a novel. Um, sometimes you do, but it's, it's becoming something that people do much more rarely. Most reading is done online, at least in my life, in my experience. I, I read the news online, I, I read my correspondence online, even I read ebooks. Um, also website articles when I'm looking for information. So I think, you know, as teachers we have to kind of expand or enlarge the concept of reading to include like shorter chunks of text. A lot of the, the reading that's, that students are likely to do involves shorter um, chunks of text. But the problem is, um, traditionally, teachers have kind of looked down on or, you know, devalued this kind of reading. They consider like formal essays or novels or short stories to be kind of worthwhile reading, whereas shorter pieces of, of, of reading are, are not as valuable or not as useful. And I think this needs to be kind of expanded, not only because uh, we want to help our students to build those skills, but also because there's something worthwhile to learn from that kind of reading as well. So we should expand our view of what worthwhile reading material is. We should include things like chat, chats, or you know, short news articles that they might see online. We should include that in our reading, reading assignments. So what are some of the, re the, the reasons or the motivations for students to read? Well, maybe they might need some information to do an assignment that they're, that they're working on. Or maybe um, some students, read for pleasure or relaxation, once they've kind of discovered this, this value of reading, you know, to kind of take them away from the real world and into a fantasy world and they can kind of relax and enjoy themselves. Um, or maybe they could be kind of curious about a subject. They want to learn more about um, lemurs or they want to learn more about their favorite kind of animal. Um, also just to escape from the everyday. So these are some of the reasons why we, why we read and also why, why students read. So it's important to remember that, you know, the, the self, the student's self is always in the background. They're always kind of viewing what they're reading, what they're being forced to read through that lens, through the lens of the self. They're asking themselves subconsciously or consciously, they're asking themselves, why, why is it important? Why should I care? So we need to help students, especially at the beginning of a reading lesson, we need to help students to make a real world connection with what they read, to make a connection, to, to see that it's not just an uh, abstract topic, but it's going to have real importance for them, and it should matter to them, and they should be interested in it. So the kind of the main takeaway here is we should give students opportunities to discover the value of reading on their own terms. A lot of students don't like reading just because they haven't discovered that reading has those, those you know, possible ways of enjoying. You know, they haven't discovered that reading can be fun and enjoyable and a way to kind of escape reality and you know, to go on a kind of journey or to travel in your mind or to learn about something really interesting. They haven't discovered that yet, so we need to give them opportunities to do that by connecting them with the topic, by making it relevant to them. And then they're going to discover on their own that it's, it's a worthwhile thing to do. So here's some guidelines or some tips that you can follow as a teacher to, to help your students to kind of make those discoveries, to make that discovery about the value of reading. The first one is basic, but it's also the one that's most often overlooked. That is, provide periods of quiet time in class to read. You know, set aside 20 minutes or 15 minutes of class time 
once a week where they can just read, they can do extensive reading. Also, uh, help students to discover the, 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 the resources that are available to them as extensive reading resources, but give them the freedom to choose. As we talked about, you know, the, the relevance the relevance of the reading material to the student is very important. If, if they can't see the relevance to their own life, they're not going to be interested in picking that material up and reading it. So give them the freedom to learn, to, to choose their own material. Also, for more kind of intensive reading, in, instead of the extensive reading, for more intensive reading, do things like a lead-in and a personalization activity to kind of explore the relevance of the content for the student themselves. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Basically, that means get them interested in the topic, like generate interest in the topic, and also kind of relate it to their life. Another way we can kind of help them to discover the value of reading is by giving opportunities for follow-up uh, group discussion or kind of ways to respond to the reading. So by, by enabling them or giving them opportunities to kind of say what they think or what, what they got out of the reading, we can help them to put that into words and to, to kind of articulate their feelings. And they'll, they'll learn from each other as well, what they thought about the reading, why it was important to them. So we need to give them opportunities to do that. So let's talk a little bit, sorry, I'm just going to get some water here. Wow, lots of people from uh, Morocco, from the Middle East. Hi, Fatima. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, the learning flow. So when you have a, a reading lesson, when you have um, a reading passage that you want to go through with the students as an intensive reading activity, how do you present that? How do you go through that? So this is also a way that we can kind of spark passion for reading by presenting it well as teachers, by present, presenting it in an accessible way that students can kind of understand the material and get something out of it. So let's talk a little bit about that. So basically we can break the lesson into before reading, while reading, and after reading. So we're going to take those one by one and unpack them and, and talk about what students should be focusing on and the kinds of activities that you could be doing during those uh, periods. So let's start with before reading. So basically before reading activities are about arousing interest in the topic in getting them interested and, and excited about reading and relating the topic to themselves. So why is it important to them? and also kind of establishing an aim. Why, why am I reading this? What am I supposed to get out of this reading? So that's one part. And the other part is in improving students' chances for comprehension, doing things to kind of set up the reading so that we can help students to get more out of it the first time, the second time they read it. So we talked about those two main purposes, engagement and scaffolding. So what does engagement mean? It could mean things like leading activities, setting aims. It could also be about personalizing the topic, relating it to their life. Um, and we also talked about scaffolding. Scaffolding here means giving students some kind of help to understand the topic, to understand the reading. Yeah, some people are jumping in with ideas like show pictures about the topic, picture walk. We're going to talk about those in just a minute. So scaffolding could be things like schema activation. Schema activation means um, reminding students what they already know about a topic. They already know some, maybe some basic information or some um, things that they've heard already about the topic or they've learned in other classes, kind of reminding them about that or getting their, getting their um, mind ready for the new information. We can also do things like vocabulary front-loading. That, that just means teaching the difficult content vocabulary in advance. And we can also do things like previewing. So let's just take some of those elements um, one by one. 
Yeah, lots of great ideas in the uh, comment section. So as some people have mentioned, like Iman and uh, who else mentioned that? A few people mentioned showing pictures. Yeah, definitely. If, if they're doing a reading about, it could be about a, um, a, a specifically about nonfiction readings, but it can also work for fiction readings as well. If you show a related picture and get them to talk about it, this can kind of generate their interest. Also, I really like using videos. I think videos, students kind of relate very well and kind of respond very well to video, especially videos with, uh, you know, very little dialogue, very little, you know, um, words that they have to worry about, just some pictures. So you can get them to kind of get in excited about the topic. It works really well with especially lower elementary grades. Also, um, so show pictures, show videos as a lead-in. Also, personalize the topic and s activate their schema. So we can activate their schema by asking them about their prior knowledge. So you could ask questions like, what do you know about beavers? Or what do you know about locomotives? Have you ever ridden a train before? So these kinds of questions can kind of help them to activate their schema and also relate it to their own experience. We also talked about um, before reading activities could also include setting aims and schema activation. So aims can be things like, why, why am I reading this? Am I reading this to learn something? Am I reading this because I'm, I, I have a question in my mind that I would like to have answered? Am I reading it for enjoyment? So setting that kind of uh, aim can help motivate students also. We can also do things like providing scaffolding. Uh, sorry, um, also setting the aim can provide scaffolding and contextualizes the new information. And we can um, do things like one, one activity that I really like is the five senses chart. So if you're talk, doing a reading about some kind of uh, environment, like it could be a, a forest or a seashore or a field or something like that, that involves that kind of maybe a city, you could get them to fill in the five senses chart. That means, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you smell? What do you taste? So it can be all about, um, they can, that's one way to kind of get their acti uh, schema activated. Or we could get them to do a KWL chart. If you look in the bottom uh, right hand corner of the slide, I really like the way that this teacher did this. So they, instead of doing KWL chart uh, as a sheet, a worksheet, they actually did it up on the whiteboard. So they set up the whiteboard with uh, what do I know about the topic? What do I wonder about the topic? And then afterwards, what have I learned about the topic? So KWL charts are another way to generate, uh, to activate schema and kind of to set an aim. Maybe they could, they have certain questions that they want to have answered in, in the reading, when they're doing the reading. We also said that as a pre-reading, before reading activity, it's very important to do scaffolding. So in this case, pre-teaching vocabulary or maybe pre-teaching difficult structures that students will have trouble with. So the important thing here is we should focus on just important vocabulary. A lot of teachers try to teach all the difficult vocabulary in a passage and this is overwhelming and probably not necessary for students to get the general idea of the, of the passage. So you should really focus on the kind of core content vocabulary that they're going to need to make sense of the, the, the reading the first or second time they read it. You might also want to do a follow-up activity that focuses on the vocabulary, something like a crossword or what we call a double puzzle where they answer the questions and then um, they choose certain letters of each word and that spells out another secret message. <clears throat> Or um, we could do like fill in that blank activities or matching with higher level students, maybe matching the definition with the, or pictures with the words. These kinds of activities can help to consolidate the learning and get students 
you know, f firmly with that vocabulary in their mind before they look at the reading. Another way, um, I saw some people mentioning in the comment section about uh, doing predictions. Predictions are another really good lead-in activity to kind of get, it's another way of doing scaffolding. The reason is, um, you know, we get the students to skim the content and look at the content and make some guesses about what they think it will be about. And that kind of gives them some clues to help decode the, uh, the, the passage. So we can kind of, um, especially for younger students, we can kind of guide that process. For younger stu students, that might involve doing a picture walkthrough. This is especially good for picture books. You know, you can get them to look at the pictures and say, oh, what kinds of things do you see? What's happening in the picture? Oh, here we see the main character. He's a little bear. And what is he doing? Who is he meeting? What is, you know, what do you think he will do next? So we can kind of walk through the pictures first um, in order to get them ready for the story. For older students, that could involve doing things like skimming through the, the passage and looking at the titles, the headings, some of the graphics. Maybe there's a chart, maybe there are some illustrations and making some predictions about the content or the plot. Um, this is another thing that we can kind of go back to as a while, while reading activity. So they can make some predictions. If you take a look at the prediction chart that I have on the slide there, on the left-hand side, they can make some predictions about what will happen. Maybe they make two or three predictions about the story or about the content. Then they read it once or twice, and then they can say, was I right or was I not right? What actually happened in the story or what happened in the passage? Fatin says, that's what I do with my students. Yeah, it's very popular and very, uh, very useful activity. So here's some ideas. Maybe some of them you haven't seen before. So we talked about KWL charts. We talked about prediction charts. We talked about these kinds of things. So those things are very familiar to teachers. Here's some new ideas maybe you haven't seen before. So the first one is called carousel. So what you can do is get the, get, hand out some paper, just blank white paper, and get students to draw a big X across the paper. And then in the four triangles that result, you can write one main topic about that's going to appear in the reading. So it could, in this case, we have England, 1800s, carriages, and horses. And so what you can get students to do is join uh, in groups of four, sit around the paper, and then take one minute and fill in what they know about that topic that's in front of them. And then after one minute is up, rotate the paper 90 degrees, fill out the next one, and then do it again. So four times they're going to rotate the paper around and just write what they know. Even if they don't know anything, they can just write down, I don't know anything. Then, after they're finished, they've done that four times, have one member from the group stand up and share what they've all kind of gathered, the, the information they've gathered. So that's, uh, that's called carousel. That works very well with like upper, yeah, like the lower, lower grades it could work as well, like maybe grade three, grade four, as long as they have some basic writing ability. Another idea is the idea line. So in order to kind of generate, uh, activate their schema and generate interest in the topic, you can get, give them a piece of paper and again, again, a blank piece of paper, this time they're going to draw a horizontal line across the paper. And on one end, on the left-hand side, they write, I know nothing. I don't know anything about this topic. And on the, on the right-hand side, they're going to write, I know a lot. Then uh, the teacher is going to call out three or four different topics from the reading. Maybe in this case, horses, England, carriages. And the students are going to write that word somewhere on the line, depending on how much they know about the, uh, yeah, you could, Shaima 
says this idea line idea goes with upper grades, right? Yeah, you could do it with upper grades. It's probably better, probably when they have a little bit of background knowledge to work with. Grade three, four, five, I think that it would work very well. So get them to write on the line how much they know about that topic. And then once they've got that piece of paper, they can mingle with other students. They can go around the classroom and they can say, Oh, let me see your paper. Oh, okay, you know a lot about horses, but I don't know a lot about horses. What can you tell me about that? So they can share their information, things that they want to know about and things that they uh, already know about. Another idea is instead of the, the, the teacher, instead of the teacher teaching the vocabulary, what you can do is, a, is give the students that as a little job. So you could write down a list of tricky words from the reading and divide it into some short lists, maybe like groups of two or three words, and then break the students up into, um, into groups, maybe like three, three teams, and give each team two or three words to define. They can talk with each other, or maybe they can use other resources like the internet if, if it's available in your classroom, and they can get the definition of the word. Then after you've given them some time for that, maybe five, ten minutes for that, they can send little messengers to the other teams and get the definitions of the, the words, bring it back to their team and write it down on the, the list. And then after, that's, after you've given everybody time for that, then you can discuss the words as a class. So in this case, they're doing the work, they're getting, and it's gonna, they're getting the information and it's going to stick in their mind better. Fatih says, please, I want this live video to be recorded. Yeah, it's available on our Classbox site, actually. Um, you'll, I think you'll be able to, link, to find the link for that in the, uh, in the description for the video. Okay, so we talked a little bit about um, before reading. Um, so we talked about schema activation, about um, personalizing it, about scaffolding, building their uh, ability to, to understand the reading. Let's shift gears and talk a little bit about while reading. So while reading means things that we're doing, you know, once we've got them ready for the reading, then we're jumping into the reading, and now what are we focusing on as a teacher? What are we getting the students to, to work on? And the main thing is building their uh, reading skills, giving them opportunities to uh, practice their reading skills. So that could mean things like decoding, building fluency, that means building their speed and familiarity with reading, um, building vocabulary skills, we'll talk a little bit about that after. Uh, for higher level students, building their reasoning, so their ability to kind of question things and answer questions as they're reading. Things like uh, skimming and scanning activities for, for uh, upper, upper, grade, upper elementary grades and intensive reading skills, finding information in the passage and understanding it at a deeper level. Shaima says, is vocabulary teaching while practicing reading skills really needed? Well, I think uh, when you're going through a reading and they encounter a word that you haven't introduced to them, like a content word that they haven't been pre-taught, they're going to struggle with that word and you should teach, use that op as an opportunity. You know, maybe your, your student puts up their hand and says, teacher, I don't know this word and we didn't talk about it before. If that happens, use, you can use that as an opportunity to teach vocabulary skills, giving them opportunities to kind of look around the context and, and, and get clues for themselves. Otherwise, when are, when are they going to learn that? So you can kind of go through a reading routine. This is just what I do. Not all reading teachers teach reading this way, but this is what I do. Um, my, my feeling is, you know, going through a reading just one time, most learners are not going to fully understand the reading. They're not going to get the main ideas. So what I usually do is approach the reading several times in several different modalities in order to help students to kind of understand it more deeply. So the first time through, we just listen. Actually, we just close our books 
and just listen to the audio and try to get like a general, general idea of the topic. This is another way of kind of, you know, int introducing the reading, kind of getting them used to the, the ideas of the reading before they actually have to do the decoding. Then after they've listened to it once, just talk about, check the general comprehension. Maybe they understood the main idea or maybe they, they heard a few words or a few I ideas that they understood. Then get them to open their books and this time re reading, uh, they're following along with the reading. So they're li either listening to the audio or they're listening to you, you read it and they're going to follow along in the reading. Then you're going to ask them questions about each section of the reading. And the final stage is about doing either popcorn reading or choral reading. Maybe you can alternate those, those two techniques. Popcorn reading is when one student reads at a time and you, you kind of get one student to read one part of the passage and then you switch to another activity, uh, to another student to read the next set of lines. Choral reading is when the, the whole group reads together. Jose says, reading routine is important to younger learners. Yes, definitely. When they get into the upper grades, you don't need to do this as much. Maybe you have a, a different approach for uh, doing reading activities at the, reading lessons at the upper grades. So we talked a little bit about, um, about vocabulary skills. Shaima uh, was, was wondering about that. As I mentioned, you know, you, you don't have to teach these them thematically in your, in your class. Maybe you have another part of your lesson where you want to do that. But if vocabulary questions come up in the classroom, while you're reading, maybe you can use that as an opportunity to teach them uh, vocabulary skills. Vocabulary skills here, here means using things like structure clues, context clues, and knowledge clues to guess the, the meaning the, of the word. So things like structure clues could mean um, the parts of the word. So for example, if there is a, a root and a suffix or a prefix, they can use that to understand the, the basic meaning or the part of speech. Is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it an adjective or adverb? And context clues means things like um, in the sentences around the word, in the sentence where it, where it appears or in the previous sentence, the following sentence, maybe there are clues that they can use to help understand uh, the, the meaning of the word or maybe in the overall passage, maybe there's a kind of a, a, a tone or a mood in the, in the passage that can kind of help them get a little clue. And the final one is about knowledge clues. Knowledge clues here means things like things they already know. Well, maybe they might be reading about some uh, topic they already know a little bit about. They know about it in their, in their mother tongue, but this new word comes up and they, they can use their background knowledge to understand what that new word means. Miriam says, or the type of connective or uh, contrast, for example, exactly. If, there's a, if it appears in a sentence and there's a, another part of the sentence that says but, then they can look for the contrast between the part of the sentence where the word appears and the other part of the sentence where it's, it's being contrasted. So these are the kinds of things that we want to teach students uh, thematically. Other things that we can focus on while, uh, as while reading activities are things that are going to enhance our students' kind of reading subskills, things like scanning, skimming, and intensive reading. So when we talk about scanning, uh, scanning means looking for specific information by kind of moving our eyes quickly through a passage. We can do this in our native language very easily. We can kind of skim very quickly and find a number, find a year, find a date, find a piece of information or a name. But students who are reading in, their, uh, in a new language, in a language they're learning, have a harder time with this and they need to practice doing this. So scanning is one skill we can teach. Also skimming. Skimming is very important for previewing material, for kind of getting the overall idea of the passage before you jump in. So skimming means 
moving your eyes very quickly through the passage to kind of get the overall idea. Students that are very familiar with reading know things like, you know, we should look at the first line of each paragraph. We should look at headings or these kinds of things when we're skimming. But students who are in lower grades, they need to develop these skills. And then we can also work on things like intensive reading, how to really understand the details and the, the relationships between ideas in a, in a reading passage. So here's some things that we can, we can do, some ideas for activities that you can do for while reading. So one thing I've tried before with my classes, after maybe not, not during the first reading, but maybe the second reading of a passage, you can build scanning, activity, uh, scanning skills by doing this notice board quiz. So what you can do is photocopy the passage and kind of put it up on the four four places in your classroom, up on the walls or on a notice board. Um, then divide the class into teams, one for each copy that you've made. Maybe you've made two or three or four copies. And then read out some prepared questions, like comprehension questions about the passage, or getting them to look for specific numbers or specific pieces of information in the passage. And then have one member of each team go up to the, the passage and as quickly as they can, find that information and call it out. Then whoever calls it out first gets a, a point for their team. So this is a way to kind of develop their scanning, their scanning skills. Another activity that you can do is with books closed, start with the books closed and Set like a realistic time limit for, for the reading, like approximately how fast you can read it. Maybe for a one-page passage, maybe, you know, a minute, two minutes, something like this. Then get, give everybody a, a very uh, general comprehension question. For example, the main idea, the main idea, what's the main idea of the passage? And then get them to open their books and as, as quickly as they can, find the answer, and then close their books when you call out the time. And then have students raise their hand to answer. Again, this develops their skimming ability to, to find information quickly. For more uh, intensive reading uh, activity, you can develop intensive reading skills with student-generated questions. So you can put the students in pairs and you can do this kind of after the first reading. And Ashima says she uses this technique with students, limiting them in some time. Yeah, it forces them to read quickly, which also builds their fluency. So very, uh, very useful. For example, you can uh, put them in pairs, put students in pairs, and then get them to, uh, after the first reading, get them to write some questions. Maybe they could refer to the passage and write some maybe true or false questions, multiple choice questions, just two or three questions. Then they can trade their questions with another team, with another pair, and find the, the answers to the questions. Then they can kind of join together with the, the pair that they exchanged the papers with and discuss the answers. Another activity that you can do for, tech, for uh, intensive reading building is text markup. A lot of uh, teachers just do um, comprehension questions very simply by answering the questions. But actually it's much more effective to sometimes, occasionally, not all the time, but occasionally get them to find the evidence in the passage. So you can do this with maybe different colored pencil crayons or highlighters. What you can do is like, you know, put uh, the color on the question number and then get them to highlight or underline the information in the passage where they found the answer to that question. Then when you, uh, when you take up the question, you can, especially for uh, higher level students, you can get them to justify their ideas. So you can say, oh, okay, uh, a is the answer to number three. Why? Why do you think so? What, what did you find in the text that justifies your answer? So this is very good for building, uh, building intensive reading skills. 
Okay, so we've talked about before reading with schema activation, scaffolding, generating interest, these kinds of things. We've talked about while reading, developing their reading skills like skimming, scanning, and um, intensive reading skills. The last stage is going to be about after reading. So after reading here means focusing on things like summarizing, analyzing the passage, evaluating a passage. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Why? And also applying and extending information that they might have learned. So why should we do after reading activities? Sometimes you know, some teachers, they, they, they treat reading very seriously and they think, oh, we shouldn't do things like crafts or extension activities, these kinds of things. It's very silly. We shouldn't have students act out skits. So why? Why should we do these things? Because actually students integrate their skills and they deepen their understanding of a, of a passage or of a topic when they're talking or they're writing about a reading passage. I don't know if you've had this kind of experience, but sometimes if you go to your friend and you ask them advice, sometimes just by talking about the problem, you know, the, the solution comes up. The solution appears through articulating your ideas. That's the same thing with this. This is the same concept. So by doing after reading activities, getting students to articulate their ideas about a passage, we can help them to kind of come up with those ideas and come up with their feelings. And those kinds of things might, uh, might help them to understand more deeply. Also, um, these kinds of activities might involve things like retelling, retelling a story or retelling the content in a passage. Also, evaluating a story or interpreting a story somehow. So here's some ideas for things that you can do as after reading activities. One is using organizers. A lot of people use organizers for um, during or while, act, while reading activities. Personally, I think they work better as after reading activities because you help students to kind of understand the big picture, the, the big concept, and how ideas relate to each other. So they could work in pairs to kind of pool their ideas and fill in the graphic organizer based on the reading. For lower level students, maybe you could in, in provide them with some scaffolding on the board. That could be things like give them the answers but have them be scrambled so they have to plug the ans answers into the right place in the, uh, in the organizer. Or you could give them some sentence frames. On a timeline, for example, you could say first the character did this, then the bear, the bear did this, the bear met these people. So you could give them a sentence frame or a sentence starter as a way to give uh, scaffolding for lower level students. For higher level students, you know, get them to fill out the organizer at, in, in, a, in a small group or in a pair, and then as an extension of that activity, get them to summarize based on their organizers. So they've, they've organized the ideas, and then get them to give a presentation about what they've learned or what they've read about. Yeah, right. Fatma says, communicating their learning, right? That's uh, definitely uh, part of what we're doing here. We're getting them to articulate what they've learned or their, their um, that can help them to kind of consolidate their ideas too. Another thing we want to do as, uh, as an as a, uh, after reading activity is some kind of extension activity. For lower, lower level students, that could be things like crafts or drawing or making something. Maybe making a map of a, a story to show where, where it happened. Or drawing some pictures about the story. For lower level students, that works great. Maybe for uh, topics, like for, for Nonfiction content, you could get them to do a poster. For higher level students, you could get them to do things that invo involve more uh, higher order thinking skills, analyzing information, evaluating information, or applying information. Give them some new information that is uh, related and get them to apply what they've learned to that, that new situation or that new information. And you can make that collaborative also, so that can, that can kind of serve multiple purposes. Getting them to collaborate on something, 
getting them to kind of uh, communicate use it, using the information that they've they've uh, they've taught, learned in the passage. We can also do things like creative reinterpretation. So have students use their creativity to summarize or to extend the reading topic. You can get them to do something with technology. For example, make a video, record a, record a, a podcast, make a presentation to summarize what they've learned. Or you could get them to do, for example, if they've um, read about some product, you could get them to do an ad campaign. Or if they've learned about a place, you could get them to do an ad campaign for, for a travel agency or something like this. You could also get them to write out a script for a story and act it out as part of their, their reinterpretation. So we talked about before reading, while reading, and after reading. Um, things like um, when we're doing before reading, we're focusing on generating interest in the passage, setting aims for the reading, activate schema, and doing scaffolding so they can understand better. They have a better chance of understanding. During while reading, we're getting them to build their reading skills, things like skimming, scanning, looking for detailed information, uh, intensive reading skills. And then we're focusing on uh, after reading skills, we're uh, af after reading activities, we're focusing on things like analysis, summarizing, and extension. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to switch gears and talk a little bit about one of our uh, reading products. So this is called uh, Reading Future. It's a series of actually 21 books. So it's a very uh, extensive. Uh, program that we have at Compass here at Compass, and it's been very well received. It's quite popular. So let me talk a little bit about that. So it's a seven level. It's as I mentioned, it's 21 books, and they're divided into seven levels. So it goes all the way from a pre one, pre A one level, if you're familiar with CEFR. So very low level readings, individual short sentences in a in a sh very short passage with very easy vocabulary. And it goes all the way up to A2+, plus, so quite long, you know, multi-paragraph readings. And each level is divided into three books. So the, all those three books are more or less uh, aligned in terms of the level. So there's lots of content that, that, that you can cover. So each book has uh, 16 units, and each unit is about 60 to 90 minutes each, and they include all nonfiction readings. And the interesting thing about uh, this, this series is that um, it focuses on more sort of future-oriented future um, passages, especially for the higher levels. It talks about, you know, technology, uh, changes in the environment, jobs that are going to be popular, um, and it also focuses on um, um, s some school subject areas as well, like social studies, science, math, art, music, literature, language arts, physical education, careers, these kinds of things. And we've made sure that we extracted um, very useful and high, high frequency practical vocabulary from the passages. So that's kind of the focal point of the vocabulary learning. It also builds um, vocabulary skills and reading skills. And we've also included a whole section where there's a 21st century skills uh, project. So it's building their 21st century skills, like the four C's, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking skills. In terms of the level, um, starter level starts at uh, 30 to 45 words. And the Lexile is about 50 to 150, so very easy passages. And it's suitable for sort of the kindergarten grade one reading level. And it goes all the way up to uh, Create, which is about roughly 200 words. And it's at the 150 to 850 Lexile range. And it's sort of suitable for um, the top end of elementary or middle school 
grade six to grade eight, that kind of area of, of reading ability. So let me give you some uh, sample pages from each of, the, each of the levels. So the starter level looks something like this. As I mentioned, there's individual sentences, very easy vocabulary, but they're about a nonfiction topic. So in this case, it's all about how long different animals live, just showing students that different animals live a different length of time. Um, this is the develop level, so it's kind of in the middle, the middle of the series. And this is all about an important topic, cleaning up space garbage. There's lots of garbage in space around our planet, so it's about how we can clean this, this up. As I mentioned, very future-oriented or contemporary topics. So you can see the, the passage is multi-paragraph. Multi the reading level is a little bit higher, but it's still very comprehensible. It's very carefully leveled. And this is from the create level, so it's the high, higher level that we've uh, in the higher part of the, the series. And as you can see, you know, much more focus on vocabulary building, much longer passages with multi multiple paragraphs. So as I mentioned, we have lots of different informative passages covering lots of different fields. Um, just some examples from the, uh, the Dream series. We have about meat-eating meat plants, uh, dressing up, about cavities, so very kind of suitable for lower, lower grades. For, from the discovery, uh, from the discover levels, we have things like um, making money. So they're learning about, um, you know, money and how money works. About uh, hi Osama. Um, about work. About some fun things like making instruments out of vegetables. So this is the discover level. We also has, have, as I mentioned, we have uh, 21st century projects for each level, for each book uh, in, in each unit. So at the lower level, these are very simple, so they're things that they can collaborate with. And you can see on each, um, each project, the skill that they're building is actually highlighted along the top of the, the, past, the uh, project description. So each one is broken down into steps that you can do sort of uh, one by one in class, so you can explain the step, get students to do it, and then follow up with the next step. So it's kind of very systematically laid out. And for the higher levels, the projects are much more complicated. They're they're more challenging, more suitable, kind of for the uh, for the cognitive level of the students. One handy thing also is that in all of, the pa all of the units, we built a QR code into the top right-hand corner of the first page. So as a teacher, you can just scan that with your phone and play the audio right, in, right directly from your phone. It's very handy. Those, are also, those audio tracks are also downloadable from our, our homepage as well. So if you don't want to use the QR code, not necessary. So I'll just give you a very quick walkthrough of, uh, of one unit. So the way that we've organized the books is they're kind of grouped into four units that are all thematically linked around one theme. So this one is all about animals. So we open up with a, a big two-page spread with a nice big picture that you can talk about, introduce the topic, get them interested. It also lists all the academic objectives for the, uh, for the unit and some leading questions for them to think about and to personalize the content. Then each unit starts with, again, a, 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 an image for them to talk about to kind of get into the topic, and some questions, and a very short reading to kind of spark their interest. We've also included uh, videos. You can see the, uh, the video icon at the top right-hand corner of the page. So these are available on our uh, Classbox uh, platform. And we've also got a list that's downloadable from our website of the URLs where you can get these, these videos. These are, have all been chosen to kind of match up with each topic. So the new words, after they kind of lead into the topic, 
the, the new words are, are front-loaded. We, we teach them the con important content words. For the lower levels, that's about six to eight words. For the higher levels, it's more like 10 to 12 words. Those words are all highlighted in the text as well, so it kind of helps students to, to, to re recall that they've learned that word. Then at the end of the reading, there's a section for them to, uh, to write down their time so they can focus on building their reading speed. Also, we've got little corners about reading skills, vocabulary skills, and reading skills. Then we go into reading comprehension, usually uh, short reading comprehension, and then an organizer. So we build all of the organizers from compare and contrast, uh, sequence, um, pros and cons. We, ha we have represented them all throughout the series. And we've kind of leveled them according to the difficulty level as well. Then they go through a vocabulary review where they, um, they recall the vocabulary that they've learned at the beginning of the unit. And then we have the 21st Century Skills Project, and that's always thematically linked to the topic that they've... Um, sorry, Fatin says, what's the name of the book? It's called Reading Future. For each unit in the book, we have a two-page uh, workbook as well, where they, they focus again on the vocabulary, so they can do that for homework or they can do that in the class. There's also additional comprehension checks and then a summary activity where they can see the, the vocabulary that they've learned, again, in the context of, uh, of the summary. There's a whole range of uh, supplementary materials that are available from our website. You can download them from our website or from our Classbox platform. There's things like uh, answer key, full answer key for the books, all of the audio files, word lists, tests, worksheets, um, tests for the, uh, for the books, the video links list, also lesson plans, a syllabus. Uh, the starter level has flashcards as well. And we have also background information briefs. The reason that we uh, produce those is we know uh, teachers are not experts on all of these topics. So some of the topics that you're not familiar with, you can read the brief first and then go into class prepared to answer questions. If you want uh, more information about Reading Future, you can um, go to our website, at, visit our website at compasspub.com slash rf. That's going to take you right to the uh, section about Reading Future. Or you can scan this QR code with your phone. I'll just give you a second to do that. Maybe I'll take a, a look at some of the questions. Is the book available online? It is actually on our Classbox uh, platform. I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now. I think there were a few. Were there any other questions? And just very quickly, I wanted to talk also about a couple of our new uh, digital platform, uh, digital products. Um, the reason is I know a lot of you are um, uh, share the website for Class Booster. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm sorry, for Reading Future, it's compasspub.com slash rf. I know a lot of you are teaching, uh, teaching online now because your schools are closed because of uh, COVID-19. Um, we actually have um, a platform that can help you to, to teach with our material to teach your classes online. It's called Classbox. It includes all of our products um, in a digital books library. And um, it can be used for remote teaching, as I mentioned, or it can also um, it can also be used uh, in the classroom. When things return to normal, you can use it on the projection screen or on the uh, whiteboard, digital whiteboard. Um, it includes a full catalog of all of, our, uh, all of our books, all of our series. And all of those are embedded with the answer key and some markup tools and the audio as well. So you can use them to present material in class. 
We also have an LMS that links with uh, BigBox. That's the other, the other pro pro uh, product that I'm going to introduce to you in a minute. And we also have uh, professional development seminars, that, including the one that you're watching right now. So um, I encourage you to check that out. If you want to see what it's all about, you can go to classboxenglish.com. Sorry, Rashid says, uh, does it include lesson plans? Yes, we have lesson plans for Reading Future. You can get them uh, from our website. The other uh, pro product that I wanted to talk about is uh, BigBox. So BigBox is actually linked with ClassBox. It's a learning, uh, English learning application that's aimed at younger students, younger learners. And it includes uh, a huge library of videos, and readers, playbooks, and it's all available to the students to, to customize their own learning. It also includes lots of gamification elements, so it makes learning English fun. There's things like co collecting cards and playing quiz games, and uh, there's different characters. So it's like language learning gamified. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can go to your uh, uh, Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and search for Big Box, one word, or you can scan the QR code here. So thank you very much for your attention. If you, if, uh, if you have any other questions, you can always ask me right now. If not, thank you very much for your attention and I hope you got a lot out of this seminar and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much.